Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to take a look at the newest Mattel Jurassic World Amber Collection figure. As you can see, it is Velociraptor Echo. I was actually not even sure if I was going to purchase this one, just because they've released so many raptors at this point. I kind of passed it up numerous times on the Target website when it popped up, and I just didn't get around to ordering it. However, I was recently at Target, kind of looking around for some of the newest Mattel stuff, and I did notice that this was on the shelf, so I decided to grab it and just include it in my collection anyway, because why not complete the Raptor Squad? But you can see as far as the packaging goes, it's pretty much your standard Amber Collection packaging with Velociraptor Echo down there at the bottom as far as the name of the animal included and then here on the back of course amber collection velociraptor echo and then there is some information down here as far as echo goes however it's all very jurassic world oriented the information not camp cretaceous yet the paint scheme on this is more of a camp cretaceous style paint scheme which if you ask me is definitely a letdown because i was really looking forward to echo i think the most out of the raptor squad to have that beautiful jurassic world style paint scheme and we unfortunately did not get that we have this version here but regardless i'm really excited to take a look at it so let's break it out of the packaging right now so we have the base your standard amber collection style base as well as the peg that holds up our raptor you also have the headgear from jurassic world included and then here is our echo figure herself which will stand i'm certain of that but i don't have it in a very good position currently okay there we go now we've got her standing and you can see that straight away out of the packaging, the figure does look pretty nice. I will say the actual paint scheme is appealing, just not really for Echo. That's my only gripe. I was really excited about the actual Echo paint job. I thought it would have looked really cool. And this paint scheme looks pretty decent, but it honestly looks more like a uh, version of a Lost World Jurassic Park style Raptor more than Echo, if you ask me. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get a look at this figure up close right now. So as far as what we need to take a look at on the figure, it's only what's new with this figure because we have actually looked at the Amber Collection Velociraptors many times already because they've released the same exact sculpt numerous times. And I think this is the fifth time now that we've had the same sculpt but a new paint job, of course. So we're only really going to look again at the paint job because that's what's new on the figure. But up here on the face, you can see that primarily it is a nice brown coloration and it has a beautiful darkened area of brown around the eye, which is really cool that they've added in some paint on the face because if we can recall back to Charlie, they kind of skipped the face on Charlie as far as the paintwork goes. So it's nice to see some paint now on the face of this one. The eye looks beautiful as far as the actual paint application. It's nice and perfectly placed, has a beautiful gloss coat on it as well as a very nice black striped pupil. Opening the mouth, of course, you do have tons of articulation on the head, which is always an incredibly awesome aspect of these Amber Collection figures. But you can see the teeth look really good, nicely painted in there. And then as usual, the inside of the mouth has a really nice realistic looking paint application. And you also have kind of like a bloody appearance on the inside of the mouth, which is one thing that they've continuously added onto these Amber Collection figures, which I really do quite like, so that is a huge, huge plus, if you ask me, is just how realistic looking the inside of the mouth is, and you can see, actually it's a better shot right there with the light hitting it, but you can see how nice that gloss coat appears on the inside of the mouth as well. Very nice, very realistically done, and beautifully painted. I will say I'm not a huge fan of the way that this lighter coloration here kind of runs up here onto the face, I just don't think that looks very good. I feel like it looks very sloppy with the way it's painted. And over here, even worse, it actually, you can even see some of the lighter paint that kind of landed here on the palette area of the Raptor. And it just doesn't really look that good as far as that goes. But then moving down here into the neck, you can see that that nice brown continues. You start to get some of these darker brown stripes that pick up right here as we transition down into the further part of the neck. And you can see a nice smooth transition between that kind of greenish underside and the brown up here. And now, that darker brown starts to kind of take over the entire majority of the back of our Raptor, and I do like that. I think that looks really good, very nicely applied as well, and that's kind of different than most of the previous Raptors that we've had, I think. So I do quite like the way that that appears, and you can see it stripes down onto the body pretty much all over the place. You can also see some of those stripes continue down the course of the arm, moving down into the hands. The hands transition to a slightly different brown, and they do look really good the way that they're painted as well. 
beautifully painted nails. There's no sloppiness as far as the nail paint there on the hands. Very nice and dark black. And then looking here in the stomach region, you can see that on top of like this greenish coloration, there looks to be like some alternate variation of color in there with a different color of green, just to give the figure some paint variation, which I think was a great choice. The underside gets nice and light the further down you go, so there's some really nice color variation with that as well. And then coming down into the leg, you have more of that kind of design that's striping and patterning all over the place. You can actually see it here on the shin as well, but it's really light in that area. And then coming down into the foot, boy, this tail keeps dragging on the backdrop. But coming down, there it goes again. But coming down onto the foot here, you can see again, actually this is totally backwards, so we'll have to switch that around because the dew claw is actually facing the outside of the animal. I don't know why this is actually like the second or third time that's happened to me that the part of the leg right here was kind of backwards in the packaging. I don't know why. You can also see some very nice articulation of the toe, but the foot looks great as far as the paint job goes. And if this were in the right place, you would see this striping here running down the front of the leg. You can see it over there, which that looks really cool also. Unfortunately, they don't ever paint the dew claws. You would think at least on the Amber Collection figures they would, but they just don't. And then coming back up into the body, again, that nice dark coloration continues until about here. That striping continues to run down onto the body, but then here we just kind of transition back to a striping that just runs the course of the tail, similar to what we have up here with that striping. It transitions back to that striping out here, and I think that looks really, really nice as far as that goes. Again, I would have loved to have seen the more Jurassic World style paint job on the figure. It just would have been much more appealing to me. However, that being said, I still think that the actual paint job done here on this Echo is nice, just not really for an Echo, even though this is kind of what it looked like in Camp Cretaceous. I really think it looks more like a Lost World Raptor, but like maybe like a female version of a Lost World Raptor because they weren't quite as bright. Still really cool looking overall, and I am quite happy to add it to my collection. As far as articulation on your figure goes, at this point, if you happen to have any of the Amber Collection Raptors, and there are quite a few to choose from, but you probably have a good idea of the articulation. But regardless, I will show you again. You have the articulation here in the jaw, which is on both the top and lower jaw, so you can articulate that mouth really well. It's pretty much a stop motion dream as far as having the these figures and you can also see that there is articulation in the neck in numerous spots you've got right here and here so you can position that neck all over the place and it moves so insanely smoothly just perfect articulation again as far as stop motion goes these figures are awesome you can also see articulation here at that joint it also can come out away from the body if we're trying to evolve even quicker than we need to we can try to fly early you can also see an elbow joint right there and then down here in the wrist coming back here you have hip articulation you've got articulation in the knee you have articulation there and down here in the ankle and then you also have the articulated sickle claw and then up here in the tail you do have articulation right here it is on a swivel so you can completely swivel it around and you can actually do that to quite a few of the joints on the figure but you also have a wire to position the tail in whatever pose you would like it to be displayed in so just tons of articulation on this figure as far as a size goes on our echo figure if the tail is nice and straight, and we have our raptor standing quite nicely on its base, for a length you are looking at about 12 and a quarter inches, or closing in on 32 centimeters, and then for a height, the raptor's head isn't up all that tall, so you can position this, of course, depending on where you would like to be even higher, but you're looking at roughly around the six and a half inch range, or about 14, maybe closing in on 14 and a half centimeters, somewhere around there. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack, Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Echo the Amber Collection Velociraptor. And I would like to think also if you happen to have any of the Amber Collection figures in your collection at this point, you probably have a pretty good idea of the size as this figure is exactly the same size as each of the previous Raptor releases. But if not, hopefully these figures next to it will help to give you a good idea of the size. So this Velociraptor Echo figure, the Amber Collection version, is a really nice figure. You're never going to get a bad figure, I think, from the Amber Collection. They just always continuously release absolutely gorgeous figures overall. The only downside, if you ask me, is the fact that we did not get the Jurassic World paint scheme on Echo, and instead we have this kind of Camp Cretaceous style 
paint job with the figure and that to me is a pretty significant downside because I think that the Echo in Jurassic World has potentially one of the nicest looking paint schemes out of any of the Velociraptors that we've ever seen in the film franchise. So I was really looking forward to that paint application from Mattel being applied to Echo so that the Amber Collection Velociraptor squad could finally be complete. And then unfortunately they decided to go this route. I don't know why and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that at some point they re-release the figure with the correct paint job because I would really like to have the actual Jurassic World Raptor Squad as opposed to three of the four and then randomly having a Camp Cretaceous Echo figure. I mean it is what it is. It's nice to have a Camp Cretaceous version of the figure as well. It just would have been much nicer to have the actual Jurassic World style paint scheme from Echo. But that being said, this paint application on the figure does look nice. It's really nicely applied for the most part. There's a, an area up there on the face where like that lighter coloration transitions to the upper side that I don't really like all that much. I don't think it looks all that smooth. But aside from that, I feel like the paint application does look nice and it has a very Lost World Jurassic Park style feel to it, I think. Almost like a female Velociraptor from that film, kind of. Not exact, but you know, similar. And it has me hyped for the potential of a Lost World Raptor to someday get released in this line. However, at this point, I would like a little break, I think, between Raptors. I do want to get the Lost World Jurassic Park style Tiger Striped Raptors and Jurassic Park 3 Raptors from the Amber Collection at some point. But we've had so many Raptors continuously for so long in this Amber Collection line. I think we kind of need to take a break from it briefly and at least get one or two other species out and then we can move back to the raptors if that's what they would like to do regardless again it's a nice looking figure just not what i was hoping for for my amber collection echo figure however if you would like to pick this up i will include a link to target.com where it does seem to continuously pop in and out of stock so you'll have a pretty good chance of picking it up or you can head to your local target because i found mine in store so they are now starting to show up in store as well so do one of those two things, pick this figure up if you are interested in it, and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.